I think for for a lot of people, it become very hard for to survive in a in a setting like this. In in the wilderness, away from roads, and therefore cheap transportation, it's also very expensive. You might notice that uh, everything in the stores uh, double, triple their really expensive dyes. The cheapest method of mail is at 54 cents a pound. It's better to have um, native food than, than it is to go to the stores. Like right now, at this time of the year, we do fishing, which is just about a quarter mile up. The economy that sustained our village for, for many, many generations been always uh, sea mammal. We used to gather here every winter because they would spread out during um, spring season, hunting time. But it's really important for survival here for to gather our uh, subsistence food. While these people out here may not have a lot of money richness, they have subsistence and they are very rich in food. To them, having their food for the winter known is very rich. The weather's been a great big factor in doing hunting activity like we do here. The weather's a boss. Totally affect our way of um, gathering subsistence food. Our subsistence, which is a seal, Ugrup walrus, travels north about a month, month and a half earlier than they did in the past. When you live doing what we do, the hunts uh, offshore and, and things like that, then, then you come to respect Mother Nature pretty, pretty quickly. Come on, Tally. Well, Alaska's ground zero for looking at the effects of climate change. About two-thirds of our state is covered by permafrost, and it underlies our forests. Like the name implies, permafrost is a permanently frozen layer of soil that sits below the ground here. And trapped inside it is... Soil carbon, the amount of carbon locked in permafrost soils. And this carbon has accumulated over thousands to even tens of thousands of years, and it's been sequestered, been locked into this permafrost. And now with thawing permafrost emitting that carbon as trace gases to the atmosphere could greatly amplify our contribution. Whether we be urban people living in Fairbanks or you're a native dependent on subsistence living along the coast, it's part of our landscape that could contribute to the whole global climate system. This is Percy. Hi, Percy. This is Katie with Microcom calling in regards to exceed satellite internet. Is anybody in the household watch video content like with Netflix or YouTube? Not that much. The internet connection is so slow, you, you, you're best off try, not even trying to do some of these things. I've seen so much change as far as our culture that uh, I'm one of the few left in the village here that is eloquent in our language. When the language goes, I'm told that the culture will soon follow. You have this culture that is important and needs to be continued. It's important in that manner. Can I put a dollar on it? No. Can I put a face on it? Yes. It's the face of Shushmaret. Well, it's our culture. We're supposed to, uh, to protect this whole island so that our children, our grandchildren, and their children can also experience this lifestyle, what we're living now. I, I want to say tradition and it's an art of survival. Next on the disappearing frontier, see how one local uses an old craft to make a modern living. <laughs> 